Sup Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, if you read the title of this video, you can see that I'm asking a question. Why is it that the only people who get post finasteride syndrome seem to be just young men? Well, the simple and accurate answer is because post finasteride syndrome isn't a real thing. It's just a fictional new age health scam that was made up by big pharma conspiracy theorists, lawyers, and big placebo supplement salesmen who want to get rich by suing finasteride manufacturers or by selling worthless hair regrowth supplements and programs that they know you won't buy if you take finasteride since finasteride actually works. That's why they want to scare you away from using these effective drugs so you'll try their crap instead. And yes, hair guard, I am talking about you. Now, to be perfectly clear, I'm not denying that there are people who legitimately believe that they really have post finasteride syndrome and who actually are suffering from low libido, erectile dysfunction, or even severe depression that they attribute to having taken finasteride. I do feel bad for those people, but the problem here is that all those conditions also exist for people who have never taken finasteride. Over 99% of people who have conditions like low libido, erectile dysfunction, and depression have never touched finasteride once in their entire lives. So, just because someone has one of these symptoms and has taken finasteride in the past doesn't mean finasteride caused it. That is a post hoc propter hoc fallacy. You may as well claim that playing the Xbox causes erectile dysfunction, since I'm sure there are some people who develop these problems around the same time they started playing Gears of War and Halo. In order to actually prove that post finasteride syndrome is a real syndrome, what you would need to do is show that the symptoms of post finasteride syndrome are more common in prior users of finasteride than in people who have never used finasteride. There are study designs that could establish this once and for all, but unfortunately, groups like the PFS Foundation instead waste all their money on studies with a a small number of subjects who claim to have post finasteride syndrome, which results in participation bias skewing the outcomes in favor of the conclusions the PFS Foundation wants to achieve because all they really care about is propaganda for their cause. The only other source of research on PFS is the analysis of large databases like the FAIRS database, which is a database where users of medication can report side effects. Unfortunately, the FAIRS database is completely unvalidated, so it is certainly not an accurate assessment of the risk of side effects from a drug like finasteride. That's especially true because of the influence of social media on people deciding whether or not they have post finasteride syndrome, as well as fear mongering from social media websites that cause a huge nocebo effect in people who are exposed to them. I've done lots of videos on the influence of social media, as well as the power of the nocebo effect, and I'll go ahead and link them below. But just to further elaborate on the nocebo effect, the power of the nocebo effect has been well documented, specifically with finasteride. In this study published in 2007, 120 men with benign prostatic hyperplasia were put on what they were told was a new drug, but what was actually finasteride at a dose of 5 mg per day. Half of the men were informed that the drug had specific sexual side effects like low libido and erectile dysfunction, while the other half weren't informed of the possible sexual side effects. In follow-ups, the men had to answer questions about their sexual functionality. The men who were informed ahead of time of the possible sexual side effects had a statistically significant higher incidence of those sexual side effects compared to the men who weren't informed. So as you can see from this study, people who have been told about finasteride side effects beforehand are much more likely to experience them than people who are not told about the side effects, and the subject in this study were only informed about the real side effects of finasteride. They weren't told anything about post-finasteride syndrome, so you can only imagine how much more severe the nocebo effect would be if people are told that the drug can ruin their life forever. But true or not, it's because of these database reports that depression and prolonged side effects were added to the finasteride pack insert, although the FDA stated at the same time that there was no reasonable evidence of a causal link between these problems and finasteride use. So I'm not going to go over all the reasons why post finasteride syndrome isn't a real thing in this video. That would be impossible to cover all in just one video. So instead, what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and post my post finasteride syndrome playlist below in the description where I go over every argument and every piece of research that has ever been conducted on this subject. As much as the PFS crowd hates me and likes to insult me, the fact remains that they have never been able to debunk any of my videos and they never will be able to and that drives them crazy because they're jealous of people who can actually take finasteride. But just for the sake of argument, let's pretend just for this video that post finasteride syndrome is a real condition. We're going to go ahead and entertain that hypothetical today because it leads to a very important question that has been bothering me for quite some time now. Why is it that women never get post finasteride syndrome? I've seen 
many women claim to get persistent side effects from other drugs. Like, for example, there are a lot of women who claim to have PSSD, which is post-SSRI sexual dysfunction, and I've even seen women claim to have persistent side effects from birth control. These claims are controversial, but it begs the question, how come we have never heard about any women getting post-finasteride syndrome? There are no studies, no case reports, hell, I can't even find a single anecdote of a woman claiming to have post-finasteride syndrome. The closest thing I could find was this video of a woman who claims that she took spironolactone for hair loss and it destroyed her life, but spironolactone is not a 5-air inhibitor like finasteride. It is an androgen antagonist that lowers all androgens, including testosterone, which is why it is not a viable treatment for cisgendered men. And its use in women is still fairly controversial since testosterone plays important roles in women's health. Now, you may be thinking, oh, it must be because women don't really use finasteride very often, but that is completely wrong. Lots of women take finasteride, and just so long as women aren't pregnant, there are no issues with a woman taking finasteride, especially since it is easy these days for a woman to control her fertility. There is a lot of scientific evidence showing that finasteride is effective for women just as it is effective in men, although in the case of women, it is recommended that they use a dose of 5 milligrams per day since it works better than 1 milligram per day. It's not known why this is the case, especially since for men, finasteride's efficacy peaks at 1 milligram per day, but for women, it is 5 milligrams per day, and I made a video going over that research, which I'll link below. But if you go to the female hair loss subreddit, which is by far the largest community for women who are suffering from hair loss, you can find many threads showing women using finasteride and showing their success with the drug. But if you look at any of these anti-finasteride channels on YouTube, you'll see them interview a lot of people about how finasteride and other drugs ruin them, but not once has a woman come on and claim that post-finasteride syndrome ruined their life, at least as far as I can determine. If you see a woman's face on a thumbnail from a PFS channel, it's always the significant other of some man whose life was supposedly ruined by finasteride, or it's a woman claiming to have persistent side effects from some other drugs, like SSRIs. Even on the female hair loss subreddit, I have never seen anyone claim to have post-finasteride syndrome. I have seen women claim to have gotten side effects like lower libido and anorgasmia, but I've never seen anything even remotely close to resembling the kind of rhetoric we've seen from men who claim to have post-finasteride syndrome, like people who claim they took one pill and still have side effects 20 years later, and there's almost no talk about things like brain fog, depression, or claiming that finasteride gave them a numb anus, changed their sexual orientation, or made them transgendered. On the female hair loss subreddit, there is no fear-mongering about finasteride, so it is ironic that when it comes to the subject of fighting hair loss, men are much bigger pussies than women. Now, cyberspace is pretty damn big, so maybe someone watching this video will dig really hard and manage to find some woman with PFS or who claims to know a woman with PFS and go, aha, but I wasn't able to find any, and if they exist at all, women claiming to have PFS must be even more rare than a science classroom in Alabama. Meanwhile, I can find thousands of screen Gen Z virgins crying about post-finasteride syndrome within about two seconds. Well, you might say, but Kevin, women can't get erectile dysfunction and they have lower DHT levels than men to start out with, so they're obviously not going to have the same side effects as men. Didn't you think of that, bro? Well, First of all, you're completely wrong. Women absolutely can get their own type of anatomical sexual dysfunction that is very similar to erectile dysfunction. And if any of the PFS crowd had ever seen a vagina before in their life, they'd know exactly what I'm talking about. But to explain this in the most PG-13 way I possibly can, when women get aroused, they get increased blood flow to their genitals, which causes their genitals to engorge, just like men do. And this increases genital sensitivity for women, and it also reduces genital dryness. In fact, Viagra is sometimes prescribed off-label for women for this very specific purpose. So women absolutely can get their own version of erectile dysfunction. So if men could get persistent erectile dysfunction from finasteride, then women would get persistent sexual dysfunction too. Also, one of the claims of the anti-finasteride crowd is that the persistent side effects are not just sexual, they're also neurological. So they'll say that finasteride causes things like depression, brain fog, or even suicidal ideation. According to them, that's not caused by lowering DHT. It's caused by the effect of blocking the 5-air enzyme, which is responsible for the conversion of progesterone into dihydroprogesterone, which is a step in the formation of allopregnanolone, which is a neurosteroid. 
And since I brought up the subject of neurosteroids, I now have to do the obligatory But NEUROSTEROIDS! But of course, the claims about finasteride and neurosteroids are all completely bogus. In fact, there is no reason to suspect finasteride actually lowers neurosteroids in the brain at all, and that is because finasteride doesn't significantly block the type 1 5-air enzyme, which is the 5-air enzyme in the brain. And I have a whole playlist on that subject which I'll link below. But remember, we're assuming for this video that post-finasteride syndrome is real. So if finasteride did affect neurosteroids and cause depression, it would cause depression in women too. Yep, as far as I can tell, there are no reports of finasteride causing depression in women. So that again leads me to believe that men who claim to get depression on finasteride are actually depressed for other reasons. Like for example, maybe, just maybe, they are depressed because they are losing their hair. I mean, who would have thunk it? Hair loss is very depressing of course, especially if you're convinced you can't take finasteride, which is the only drug that we know of that stops hair loss in the long term. This kind of thinking has an extremely negative impact on the quality of one's life, and I discuss all that in my video about why hair loss actually can ruin someone's life, which I'll link below. So I want to bring up one other interesting recent event that supports the fact that PFS is due to social contagion and is not a real medical condition, and that is the recent report of the European Union on finasteride and dutasteride. That report actually came out during the month that my channel was temporarily taken down by some anti-finasteride neckbeard who made a false trademark claim on my channel. So since my channel was terminated at that time, I never ended up making a video on their report, though for Fortunately, Kyle from KWRX did a great video on the report which I'll link below. The report concluded that there seemed to be a link between suicidal ideation and finasteride use, though it decided that the benefits of finasteride outweighed any risk. But since this was just a database analysis, what the report was actually saying was that there were more reports of suicidal ideation with finasteride in the database than average. Again, this is not proof that finasteride was actually causing this increase in suicidal ideation or depression. This kind of association can be easily explained because people have already been convinced that finasteride causes depression, so they are more apt to blame their depression on finasteride because they've been told that finasteride causes depression. So in other words, it's a nocebo effect. It's the claims about post-finasteride syndrome being propagated by anti-finasteride organizations that are making people more depressed and more likely to want to kill themselves, not finasteride. And I talk about that in my video about finasteride and the black pill, which I'll link below. The report contains some details that strongly suggest that this association between finasteride and suicidal ideation is completely bogus. The analysis found that most cases of suicidal ideation occurred in young men using one milligram of finasteride per day for treating androgenic alopecia, much more frequently than in older men using five milligrams per day for treating benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is very bizarre. For any other drug, the higher the dose, the more risk of side effects. Also, older people tend to have more side effects than young people from any drug, but with finasteride, the opposite was true. That doesn't make any sense Jones. Not only that, there was no association found between suicidal ideation and dutasteride use, which is a much stronger drug than finasteride. Dutasteride is not only a stronger drug than finasteride, but unlike finasteride, dutasteride also partially blocks the type 1 5-air isoenzyme, which is the enzyme involved with allopregnanolone synthesis in the brain. Now, dutasteride probably does not cross the blood-brain barrier, which could explain why its suppression of the type 1 5-air isoenzyme doesn't cause neurological side effects, but it is still three times as strong as finasteride in blocking the type 2 5-air isoenzyme. So any side effects caused by finasteride should be even more common with dutasteride. But that wasn't found by the EU analysis. And in fact, there are studies showing that dutasteride might actually have fewer side effects than finasteride, and I did a video on that as well that I'll link below. Finally, the EU report found no association between topical finasteride and suicidal ideation. That's also bizarre because topical finasteride doesn't just stay local, it is systemically absorbed. So if oral finasteride caused depression, topical finasteride would too. But I think the reason people often claim they don't get side effects from topical finasteride is because the users of topical finasteride believe it's safer and not getting systemically absorbed, so they're probably less likely to get a placebo effect from the drug. So what seems to be the case here is that the group that is allegedly affected by post-finasteride syndrome and by unproven finasteride side effects like depression is a group composed exclusively of young men who are taking one milligram of finasteride per day specifically for treating androgenic alopecia. But on the other hand, it seems like women, older men taking 5 milligrams of finasteride a day for their prostate, men using topical finasteride, as well as dutasteride users all seem to be mostly, if not completely, immune to post-finasteride syndrome and neurological side effects. How does that happen, Shums? Well, 
I think the conclusion from this is because post-finasteride syndrome and neurological side effects are not actually happening because of finasteride. They're being caused by social media. Most, if not all, the misinformation about post-finasteride syndrome comes from anti-finasteride communities and conspiracy theorists, wellness, carnivore, and biohacker influencers who prey on the insecurities of young men. It's unfortunately very easy for young men to discover these types of influencers because they talk about things that are of interest to them, like building muscle or attracting women. So once they find one of them, the algorithm will start recommending other similar channels, and then their smartphone will no longer be a phone. It will transform into a portable misinformation silo and propaganda machine, where every second of the day, they're getting new updates from influencers spreading misinformation about hair loss and DHT nonstop. Gen Z is the first generation of young men to grow up in a world where they have no memory of what life was like before social media and smartphones, so they don't know how to function without them, and so that makes them easy prey for these pseudo-masculine, pseudo-intellectual internet tough guys who will exploit the insecurities of these young men to feed them lies about finasteride and DHT so they'll be more likely to buy some bullshit liver supplement instead. It's this constant barrage of fear-mongering and misinformation by these wannabe alpha male carnivore biohacker con artists that are hurting men. It's not finasteride. So if you really want to avoid post-finasteride syndrome, you should avoid communities that spread misinformation about hair loss and avoid social media as much as you possibly can. Better yet, you should probably just get rid of your smartphone completely and get a dumb phone. That's what I did. I use this thing. Let me show you. This is a punked MPO2 phone and all it does is it lets me text and make calls. That's it. So if you have a dumb phone like this, you'll just have a phone which is all you really need. You don't need to carry around a proper propaganda machine that is going to brainwash you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Personally, I limit my internet consumption to basically just my own YouTube channel because the internet is where the trash of society dwell. If it weren't for the internet and social media, I never would have been so scared of an asteroid and I never would have needed to spend $15,000 on hair transplants to make up for the hair I lost because of all the fear mongering that made me too afraid to stay on finasteride asteroid back in the day. I would have started taking finasteride the very second I realized my hair was thinning and I know I can't change the past, but at the very least, I can hopefully prevent other people from making the same mistake that I did. Just remember, Chooms, the only reason these carnivore supplement pushing conspiracy theorists and ambulance chasing anti finasteride organizations want you to be afraid of finasteride is because that is how they make their money. They don't care about you or your hair. You're just a useful idiot to them. The more you suffer, the more they benefit. That's why they want you to be afraid of finasteride. So please, Chooms, don't give the trash of society what they want because you deserve better than trash. You deserve to have hair. Thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers. Stay on the path. I'll see you all next time. God bless.